Number 32. Sketch the distribution of electron density in the bonding and antibonding molecular orbitals formed between two s orbitals and from two p orbitals. Okay, so it seems like we have to do some sketching. Love me some drawing, right? But we have to do it for the s orbitals and the p orbitals. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this down. So we're going to make like a little partition here. And we're going to talk about the two S's. So the S orbitals are going to be on the left side. And then the P orbitals are going to be on the right side. So let's work with the S orbitals first. So little background information in order to figure this question out, right? Just know that an S orbital, remember an S orbital is always a circle. So S orbitals are circular orbitals. So I'm going to be drawing them in a circle fashion. Now, they specifically wanted molecular orbitals. Now, molecular orbitals always come from atomic orbitals. So they basically represent the same thing, but just two different ways of drawing it. So let's say that we're going to have those two s orbitals coming together. So now, generally speaking, we're talking about electron density, so it's all about kind of like probability. Now, when we have our two electron, uh, or, you know, our two s orbitals coming together, this is atom one, and this is atom two. So this is the first atom's s orbital, and this is the second atom's s orbital, and notice that I'm drawing them as circles because that's what s orbitals are. Now, generally speaking, there are two, um, if, if I can just copy and paste this, right, there are technically two, and where, where is the paste? Oh boy, well, I guess it's not working, so we will just have to improvise here. But generally speaking, it's all about probability, and for s orbitals, there always are two probabilities, right? And we label them as either being positive or negative. Now, for any s orbital from any atom, you have two different representations. You could have a plus sign and a negative sign. This just represents whether the um, atomic orbital has their electrons spinning in a clockwise fashion or counterclockwise. It does not necessarily mean that this s orbital is positive and literally this s orbital is negative. Now, when a positive s orbital, and you have a negative one here, right? Just talking about the spins, the different spins of electrons. Now, these atomic orbitals can either hook up between a positive electron orbital for, you know, the s orbital from the other atom, or a negative one as well. Now, notice how, for both of these, they're hooking up with the right um, sign, right? These are called in phase. So when you're hooking up, positives with positive or negatives with negatives, this is an in-phase uh, molecular orbital. These would make your bonding orbitals. So anytime that you have a sign that is the same, so we'll do for both of them, these would be in-phase and you would form a bonding molecular orbital. But now let's just say that I have my one atom and maybe what I'll do is I'll drop these down because I'll, I'll talk about it in a little bit, a uh, different way in a little bit. So we have our negative and we have, well, not our negative, but one atom. And then we have the other atom. And let's just say that a positive is going to try to hook up with the negative or vice versa. The negative of the one atom is going to try to hook up with the positive of the other one. I guess let's just keep it positive and negative. Now these atomic orbitals, they are not the same sign. They would not be in phase. They would be classified as out of phase. And when you are making uh, molecular orbitals that are out of phase, those are your antibonding. So bonding is just specifically talking about all in phase bonding. Antibonding is when they are out of phase. And if you have out of phase bonding, these two are not going to come together because they are not the same sign, right? It's kind of like a synergism, right? If you have something that is going in the same direction, think, you know, 
clockwise for positive, you're going to get a synergistic relationship. They're going to build on each other. The same thing for negatives as well. But here, when a positive is trying to come with the negative, you're not going to be able to get something in phase. Now, why I drew the out of phase one higher than the in phase one? And maybe these are on the same playing field because it doesn't really matter whether you have two negatives or two positives. But I just wanted to show you that as you go up in energy, so maybe I'll, I will bring this over here. As you increase in energy, your out of phase, AKA your antibonding is way higher than energy than in phase. It makes sense. But now we just have to draw the molecular orbitals. So maybe I'll put here the molecular orbitals. Okay, so molecular orbitals. Well, if you're in phase, right, they basically would be coming together. And now showing as like a one nice, uh, one nice uh, uh, drawing per se. So in this case, it doesn't really matter whether the positives or the negatives are coming together. Just know that you'll have one big picture where it has the green on the left side for the one atom and the blue on the other side. But as you can see now, if I just draw um, like the outline, this would be acting as one whole atomic orbital now. And maybe I will just color this in a little bit on the bottom here just to show that it's actually linking up. And just know that you have one electron for both in phase negatives and you have the one electron for the positive guys, right? So together, they would have one electron for each orbital so that you got the two. And this would be your bonding, S. This is represented by just saying sigma S. So if something is bonding, it means that it's in phase and you will draw it as a sigma S because when two S orbitals come together, you're forming a sigma bond. So sigma S. Now molecular orbitals, for the out of phase, well, as these try to come together, right, they try to get closer and closer and closer, but they're not the same. So there's going to be like a little separation here in which they can't cross over to make the bond. And that separation is called a node. So basically, as the green is going to try to, you know, get smushed up against with the, the blue and... Geez, help me. <laughs> help me for this type of drawing, right? But you kind of you kind of see it. And maybe if I can let me see here. Technically it should kind of be like that. That's better. And maybe I'll draw the green over again. So, they're trying to come together, but they really can't. Oh my goodness. Christina, come on. There you go, okay. And as you can see, you do have this little separation here. This separation means that there's absolutely no possibility that you will have an electron in this little range here. This is called a node. And when you form nodes, chances are you will form antibonding. So that means that the one electron will stay here and the one electron will stay here and they won't be able to freely float between the two S orbitals. This, an antibonding is represented as a sigma S, but now you have a star on the top. That star means that you are now antibonding. So this is your antibonding, because you see that node, but if everything is good and you have in phase bonding, that's, oh, I just, I wrote it up here, bonding. So those are your two. Now let's do the same for the P orbitals. So maybe I will draw, okay, as, as, your energy is increasing, right? We just have to remember what now those P orbitals look like. And remember, the P's look like the dumbbells. Now, they just want two P orbitals, so it does not matter whether we're talking about um, a PX, a PY, or PZ. So it doesn't really matter which one you draw, but I think the easiest one here would be if we tried to group together 
uh, p orbitals that kind of look like this. So where you have your nucleus in the middle and the, the dumbbells are extending outward, kind of like in like the x direction here. Okay, so in this case, what I'm going to do actually, to make this even better, is now I'm just going to draw the two separate sides of one atom in different colors because then it would be much easier to see. So here is a p orbital for the one atom, and this is coming in with another p orbital, right? And let's just draw the same one up top here because we want to show bonding and we want to show antibonding. So I'll keep this one exactly the same with the green on the left and the blue on the right. And now let's see, can you tell me this is lower energy, so this is going to be the bonding, right? Higher energy is always going to be the antibonding. But if I want to bind this, remember, think that the same, in this case, it was like positive or negative, right? So let's just keep it together. Maybe we'll say that this is negative and this is positive for your P. One side has to be one way, the other side has to be the other way. Now, in order for synergism to occur and you want that bonding, are we going to put the green next to the blue when this tries to come in and bind? Or will we put the blue next to the blue so these can come in and bind? You're absolutely correct. We will put the blue next to each other because in this case, the blue is represented as the positive and then the negative yell uh, yellow. Maybe I need to get my eyes checked. The green, yellow, what? The green negative will be, you know, chilling on the outsides. And when this P orbital tries to come together, both positives are chilling. So that's the synergism. That's the bonding. So we can just immediately draw that right now. So when we do that, here are our two nuclei, right? And now you have a completely overlap for your p orbitals because you have blue with blue positive with positive in this case right so maybe i'll draw like the two positives but just know that now you have those electrons right and since this is synergism right they come together they're in phase this is in phase your negative greens get so small because there's very, very highly unlikely probability that your electron is going to be in these. Your electron is going to be, your two electrons are going to be in the in-phase binding. And this is your bonding. What? This is your bonding uh, molecular orbital for your P's. Now, since this is still from nucleus to nucleus, right, this is classified still as a sigma bond. Remember, a sigma bond is basically when you have your electrons in the inside, it's the framework between the nuclei, right? So in this case, since we're having that electron uh, density between the two atoms and not like above or, you know, below or above, this would still be a sigma bond. And we'll say that this is the PX because these are your p x's, right? They go in the x direction. And this would be what the bonding looks like. Now, if you wanted to say that these are the negatives and this is the positive, that's fine with me as well. But I'm just drawing the dots here, signifying that the two electrons are greater probability of being in the blue and not the green. Now, we have to talk about out of phase for the antibonding. So when this px orbital is going to try to come in with the other px orbital, what color do you think would be on this side? Yeah, it's got to be the green. Because that way it's not going to be bonding, it's going to be antibonding. So this would now be a negative and this would be a positive. And when the px comes together... Uh-oh, beep, beep, not synergy, right? Those colors don't match. So what are you going to form here? Ah, you're going to form a node. And that's going to be your antibonding. And notice how antibonding, once again, is higher in energy than the other ones. So here's your two nodes. And essentially what's going to happen is 
when these come together, right, since it's, you know, synergism, uh, not synergism, because they're out of phase, these are going to get so small, because chances are the probability of finding an electron next to this node is very, very, very unlikely. That's why they're written so very small. Here's our node here. Which means that on the flip side, this green electron probability would be very high, and the blue electron probability would be very high on the other side. And if you want to put negative, positive, negative, positive, that's fine with me. If you want to put the electrons somewhere in there, that's fine with me as well. But maybe for this one, it's better to just have the signs just to show you that an electron is somewhere in here. But it can't bind because you have that node, that space in between where no electron density is going to be made. And if we follow suit, this would be sigma px star, star always for antibonding. And I think this answers the question. So let's see, sketch the distribution of electron density. That's by the nodes. Wherever there's a node, there's no electron density. Anywhere that you did not draw the, your colors, that's no electron density, meaning that the probability of finding an electron is zero. So zero in your nodes, zero anywhere outside that you drew. Um, and then any time that you drew your colors, that's where your electron density would be. The probability of an electron being there is great. Uh, we did bonding and antibonding, and we did two s orbitals coming together and two p orbitals, and that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. I really uh, hope that this helped you out. And if you wouldn't mind, tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. We might be able to help them out as well. We got math and physics videos on the channel at the moment, so check it out. Okay, I'll talk to you in later lessons. Bye-bye.